the Bible's an idol. Today is God. I want to explain to people, the Holy Ghost wants me to explain to some of the Holy Ghost people about our Creator. And when I was a little boy, God guided me, and I knew Him, but I really don't, I, I really didn't know how I knew Him. I couldn't explain, it's like trying to explain the air, you know, it's hard to explain the air. But now you think about this, there's very few men on earth that knows anything about God. Adam, of course, our father, he, he walked and talked with God. You know, and Enoch, he walked and talked with God. God just took him. They're probably still over there walking and talking with each other. I don't know. And Moses, of course, he was uh, talked to God a lot. And Abraham. And, and then, of course, the Jesus. He knew him best of all. He, he came from there. He was God's son. He had come down. So he told him about God. Just say, you have a little bit you read in the Bible about Jesus telling the disciples. He said, in that day I'll show you plainly of the Father. And he taught him about the Holy Father. It's not written. There's most of the stuff he said. It's not written. The world itself couldn't contain the books. And then after Jesus, John the Revelator, he seen the Holy Father on the throne. So now here's something I want to tell you about the Holy Father. You must always, when you go before him, respect him and honor him. Don't say, Father, you said in your word. That makes him angry. He knows what he said. And most of the things he said in, in the Bible, he didn't say that. You interpreted it. It's somebody else talking. So don't tell him that. It makes him angry. Learn how to behave yourself in the presence of God. Now, this is a, a thing you've got to understand about the Holy Father. Jonah had him right. He said he's a gracious God. He's merciful. He's patient. And he's kind. Now, understand this. You could grow up in your home and you can become more intelligent than your earthly father. You might go to college, you might make more money, but you'll never outdo this father of spirits because he's the creator of the whole world. He created Gabriel and Michael. Jesus was his son, Lucifer, all of them. He, he's got sons that rules planets. Can you imagine now, stop and take a think about your, uh, a thought about your creator. He made this world. Can you imagine when he come down talking to Job in a whirlwind? He asked Job, he said, where was you when I created this world? So you see, I don't know of anyone but me on earth today that's ever had any kind of a relationship with God. And that was when I was little. But I want to tell you so that you can learn how to behave yourself around him, learn how to relate to him, because he's different than... People think he's sitting up on the throne telling us what to do. That ain't the way he is at all. He's our Father. And listen close as I tell you these little things so that you can have some understanding. When I was little, he'd come to me and help me. He told me later when I got bigger, he said, he, he told me I'd cry from the, that day on that my Father that has been the guide of my youth. See, he wanted me to know him and understand because he had this work for me to tell people. The Bible's an idol. The Bible's the mark of the beast. This is a bigger message than most people understand. That's the reason God guided me when I was little. He'd teach me little things. I'd hurt my hand or I'd fall on my belly or something. I was in the mountains, you know, running through the mountain. And he would say, don't look at it. Well, what was he teaching me? He was teaching me to trust in him, not trust in the flesh. See, what is seen is not God. You can see a Bible, that's not God. You can't see him, he's like there. You're not getting mad at him when he wouldn't make the wind stop blowing. Now that's the truth. I knew he could make the wind stop blowing. He could do anything. I'd get in trouble and I didn't worry about it because he'd get me out of it. I never fell a grade in school, even though I was the worst one in class, because he would help me. He knew all the answers to everything. He would help me through everything I ever got into he'd get me out of until it's time for me, him to make me go a certain direction. Now, I always knew him. And when he came in me, I knew him, but he lived outside of me. When he came in me, then I started praising him in, in my body. He becomes the temple of the Holy Ghost. Remember these truthful things about God. When you come before him, think about him making the world. How can somebody, I was flying over, uh, the, the hostess on the, on the plane told me we was flying over Cuba. I was looking down over Cuba in the Bay of Pigs. And I said, Father... How did you uh, make this big old world? And he said, you can't understand it. 
in your natural mind. I'll teach you in the Spirit later. So he'll teach you. See, the Father's not like you think he is. He's very kind. He'd be very good to me. He treated me like I was his child. Go before him as you're his child. Listen to me now. When you go before the Holy Father, he loves you. You came out of him. He's the Father of spirits. Now, I know he made other planets, and he made the sun and the moon and the heavens. He made the oceans and all the fish and all the animals on the earth, everything. But we are part of him. When you come before him, don't come before him telling him nothing. He knows everything. Come before him to learn and to honor him. When I see him, he'd probably laugh at me because all the troubles I've been through, I didn't have to go through if I'd have understood. And I'll tell him, Father, sir, I wanted to thank you for guiding me in my youth because I would have never made it if it hadn't been for you. I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been from the love of my Holy Father. And he watches over little children. He comes down and plays with little children. A lot of folks don't know that, but he does. He played with Pumpkin when she was little. And so... He's a father. And I tell him, Father, I thank you for that. He knows everything I'm going to say to him. He knows everything that's in me. And I said, I want to be like Jesus. I want to do your will. I'm free in his will. And that's all. Come before him and want to do his will and love him. Now, I'm the only man I know of that has any kind of a relationship with God. But mine is so minuscule compared to John that seen him on the throne. The 24 elders, they cast their crowns down before God. And they said, God, you are the creator of all things. You created all things. You remember the men in Job? God got mad at them because they didn't say the things that was right about God. Say the things that's right about Him. Don't say that He's evil and bad. He's not. He fought for us. He lost us to the devil. And by one man's offense, sin entered the world. But He sent Jesus, and He lets us be part of Jesus' kingdom. Jesus adopted us. But God was in Jesus, reconciling the world back to himself. So he's more than you think he is. In him we live and move and have our being. He loves us so much that he poured out the Holy Ghost, that he'll come and live in us. The Holy Ghost likes to be telling you this, because he loves God. He's part of God. He's part of us. And to love God with all of your heart and all of your mind. Now remember, we, we associate with Jesus more than God because Jesus came in the flesh. But remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And what did he say about the Father? He said, the Father is the husband man. Well, the husband man's the one that planted the vine. The husband man's the one that dug around and built the tower, fixed the vineyard. That's God. Always remember him. Without him, there's nothing. He made us all. Now listen to me, what he's doing. This is what God does, because he loves us. He's made a new world. This one's polluted. He's going to destroy it. John said, I've seen a new heaven. He created a new heaven. They polluted the heavens. They got things out there floating around in there. He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And then the holy city of Jerusalem is going to come down and God's going to be with us. And when you come to him, come to him as you're his child. That you're his, don't come there arguing with him something out of the Bible. He knows all that. You can't argue with him. Job and him was talking to him. Job said, said I spoke once and I spoke twice, but he said, I'm putting my hand to my mouth. He said, I know that you know all things and no thought can be hidden from you. God knows all things. He created all things. And when I come to him, I come to him as his child and I need him. He's my life. He gave me life. Without him, there'd be no life. So honor God. He is gracious, merciful, patient, and kind. You'll find a father that loves you. If you'll treat him right, honor him and be a, a in uh, subjection to him, you will go a long way. In fact, you'll go to the new world, and he'll give you a new body. Don't appear before God and tell him you're a Catholic or a Baptist. There's no division in him. The little grapes, we're, we're all little grapes on the vine. Jesus is the vine, and we're all alike. We're one. He said, Father, I, I, Father, I pray that they'll be one as you and I are one. And the great thing Jesus said when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, your will be done. Always do the will of God and always respect Him and love Him and honor Him and He'll honor you. You need Him and He'll help you. I'm telling you, Holy Ghost children, because we're getting close to go home. So when you go before God, I want you to know how to behave yourself. Don't go up there like you're a smart aleck and know something. You never will know more than Him. He created us all. So Father, today I pray I said the right thing about you because you loved me when I was little and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guiding me when I was little. 
and out there and help these others. See how gracious and merciful and patient and kind you are, Father. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending the Holy Ghost. And thank you, Father, for what you've promised us, that we can live with you forever in a new world. Thank you for loving us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.